All right. I think that's about as far as this goes. Well, I know we're coming up on our, uh, I think I've got about two minutes left, uh, so I'm going to keep this very brief. Uh, I'm Travis Pine, the CEO and founder of Torrent Technologies. And uh, this has been a fascinating discussion this morning. Um, you know, when you guys sort all this out and you need a flood uh, platform and technology to process this on, in closing, call me, Torrent Technologies. Uh, I am going to keep it pretty brief. Uh, so that was a shameless plug. So uh, very quickly, and I know I have a flood savvy group here, um, I just want to give sort of an overview today of, of the opportunities that are out there, the technology and the platforms that exist today. Um, but before I do that, sort of just talk high level about the WIO program and by extension what a flood vendor is. So Torrent Technologies uh, is a flood vendor. Think of it as a third party administrator that provides back office services and equally if not more important a technology platform to private insurance companies aka WIO companies that resell flood insurance through FEMA. Um, there's about 85 companies, WIO companies, that exist today. Uh, 90 plus percent of those actually turn and outsource some or all uh, of their flood processing to a flood vendor, and there's a, a reason for that. Um, there are, I think FEMA says there's about eight or nine uh, flood vendors out there today that exist, um, but I would say of those, about three companies uh, represent about 90% of the NFIP processing. So two what I would call pure flood vendors, and I think Neil just left, but uh, WRM as a uh, write your own company, the largest. Uh, I think they also do some flood vendor work, but really there's three platforms out there today that comprise or that the NFIP, including the direct program, sit on. Um, there's a reason for that as well. Uh, last year was a big sort of consolidation in the market. Uh, but I think the key takeaway here is there are eight to nine different opportunities based on FEMA's uh, uh, numbers uh, that do have platforms. So there are options out there today. Um, so, so just going to kind of touch high level on this. I mean, the, the, in the last sort of year or two, the WIO program, and again, by extension, the flood vendors, have sort of come under scrutiny. Uh, all the way from uh, some ideas of just getting rid of the WIO companies and going directly to the flood vendors. Um, there's been ideas of getting rid of both and just putting the entire program into the direct side. Uh, there was a reason in the early 80s that uh, FEMA and Congress put the Write Your Own program in place. It works. Uh, there's distribution. There's, it creates competition on the private sector. Um, I, I think the, the, a lot of the uh, scrutiny has been um, misguided, frankly, and, and comes from a lack of education. A lot of it stems from the media. Anytime there's a big storm, these WIO companies or carriers really get hit hard. Um, and so I think it is important that, that we look at the efficacy of the WIO program in the, the past 20, 25 years um, as a model moving forward. So kind of shifting gears. Um, as the private sector looks at sort of um, once they do get the modeling piece in place, and this has been fascinating, the technology that's out there, uh, there's, there's going to need to be a platform that you process this on. And I think uh, the existing platforms make a lot of sense, at least to start. So as you're looking at the buy, uh, build versus buy uh, options, um, you know, there's a well source of knowledge in the WIO and flood vendor market. Uh, we've been doing this a long time. I, I think I'm coming up on 14 years. This was supposed to be a two-year stint in the NFIP, and I, I'm actually a newbie in this space. My business partner, TJ, John, TJ Johnson, she's been doing this for almost 30 years. So I think as the private sector looks at this, there's a lot that can be learned um, from the people that have been doing it for a long time, both the vendors and the WIO companies. Uh, and again, there are a number of technology assets that are out there. I think on the, the, the con side is, is just like in a number of the other insurance sectors, um, the technology is aging, right? So there's a number of legacy mainframe platforms out there. Uh, that coupled with the fact that given bigger waters and then the rollback and the, the number of changes that we've been seeing from Congress and FEMA um, have put WIOs and flood vendor IT resources, um, they've made us strapped. I mean, we're, we're, we're scrambling to keep up with all the changes. And so as the private sector looks at that, um, that's just, those are factors that need to be sort of taken in. Uh, I think these are uh, certainly um, not insurmountable. 
Uh, and I, I know, at least I can speak for my company, Torn, and the others, you know, we would welcome and accommodate. I think it makes a lot of sense to start uh, with what's out there and at least, um, you know, kick the tires and see, see what's there. Just some kind of high level, these aren't, a, these aren't sort of hard and fast, but um, as, as you evaluate these tools, you know, we're talking a lot about technology, newer technology that exists today. Um, you know, I would definitely make sure my background comes from uh, building architectures, platforms. Uh, you, you know, you evaluate a platform that is componentized, meaning um, it has flexible components that can be reused or repurposed. Uh, rating engines, business rule engines, claims modules, these pieces, uh, policy issuance engines, uh, these things that can be repurposed. Uh, you know, there will, it's, it's going to happen eventually. Um, we're pushing at Torrent to do that. I know many of the others are as well. Um, but, but to take a step back 30 years as you're evaluating this doesn't make sense. And I think looking at a, a platform that can live in multiple environments, whether it be the cloud, whether it's on-prem, whether it's uh, in a co-location facility, makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, my recommendation would be, you know, 100% web-based platform. They exist out there today. Again, I would uh, recommend that you take a look at that. Um, and, and again, look at platforms that were designed to be extensible into other lines. I think this is a good piggyback product. There's a lot of integration happening now uh, in the ENS markets with access to the base NFIP flood platforms uh, that are out there today. So uh, with that, I'm going to take any questions and wrap it up. I, I know we're coming up or past time. Hopefully I whip through that quickly. Any questions? Uh, one thing I will say also is that the, uh, the Guy Cart Marsh, it's actually 18 pages. Um, a whopping 18 pages. That is available as of today. So uh, if you are interested in taking a look at that, um, we spent a lot of time on that. It is concise. It's not, uh, it is sort of the low hanging fruit as we see it in ways to reform the NFIP. Uh, there's been a lot of good dialogue in this kind of ecosystem. So not just the WIO companies and the flood vendors, but uh, there's a number of different uh, constituents here. Uh, that have to played into that, and, and there's ongoing dialogue right now and ways to uh, continue to help improve the NFIP. Uh, this is one perspective, uh, and it did incorporate a lot of different uh, uh, outside uh, input as well. So thank you very much. Thank you.